Hello and welcome to JHEP session on testing for carbonyls. This is an investigation lesson, so uh, it'll be good if we just go through the whole video and not skip between sections. So, the first thing in the laboratory, you're given three test tubes and your task is to find out what type of alcohol each one is. I know that you'll be thinking that you want to learn about carbonyls, but alcohols do come into it. So what we should know is that, um, which I've been talking about strenuously in my other videos, is that alcohols um, oxidize to either make aldehydes, carboxylic acids or ketones. Secondary alcohols oxidize to make a ketone and there's no further reaction. That's it. It also reduces and goes the other way around to make the alcohols, primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, tertiary alcohols do not oxidize or reduce at all. So what we should do is for each test tube, we should use this distillation apparatus or we could use a reflux, but I would suggest that you don't use um, a reflux apparatus just um, for the further test that we are going to produce. So forget about that. So we know that primary alcohols and secondary alcohols will oxidize and if we put in uh, if we put in the oxidizing agent the oxidizing agent will change color color because it would be reduced so we put it in there we put test tube a in there and uh, we distill it off but the result from A is that there is no colour change from orange. Okay, because the oxidizing agent, the cr 207 slash H plus, was orange in colour, there was no change in orange. So we know just from that that this is a tertiary alcohol. Due to the fact that it does not react with the oxidizing agent because there is no color change. So the second one, we put test tube B in, obviously in the new one, and we have a color change, fantastic, from orange to green. So we know that it's either a primary or a secondary. We don't know which one it is. The same thing from C, there is a color change from orange to green, so we know that this is either primary or secondary. So, using that information, we can get rid of A, but we can still look at A just to, just to make sure that we do have a tertiary alcohol. So the next test we want to do is just to make sure we actually do have a carbonyl group in the test tubes because we have oxidized it to make a carbonyl, okay? So we just need to check that we have carbonyl groups because alcohols do make carbonyl groups. And we use 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine or 2,4-DMP, which looks like this. And we can um, mix it in with a solution of methanol and sulfuric acid to make this fantastic reagent called Brady's reagent. Okay, so Brady's reagent is a mixture of 2,4-DMP, methanol and sulfuric acid. Acids. All right, H3SO4. Oops, I didn't even. Why did I write that? H2SO4. All right. So now, what happens when we react? When we have this test tube and we put in Brady's reagent, what happens is that, let's say, for example, we have um, this aldehyde here. I'm not saying that the test tubes is has got this aldehyde, I'm just using an example one, is that the H2 from the 2,4-DMP will react with the oxygen in a nucleophilic addition substitution reaction to form, or a condensation reaction, to form a compound that looks like this. So what we have here is that the H2 has reacted with the oxygen in the condensation reaction to make H2O because everything likes to make water and we have the double bond connected from the N to the C and this is called a 2,4-DMP derivative. So when that happens we form a precipitate and the precipitate colours are either orange or yellow. Um, some people might not even know the difference between orange and yellow. 
So we cannot use this to distinguish whether this is an aldehyde or a ketone, by the way. So these are the results. Results from A, no precipitate formed. That is expected because we do not have a carbonyl group in the tertiary alcohol. So results from B, a yellow precipitate is formed, which sounds about right. That means we do have a carbonyl group. And over here, we've got an orange-yellow precipitate formed. Okay, so we do have two different colours here, but we cannot assume that one is an aldehyde and one is a ketone just from the colours. But we do know that we do have carbonyl groups here. Okay, remember carbonyl groups just have a double bond O and a H there. Remember this point, um, it shouldn't react with carboxylic acids. That's why I um, suggested that we just use the distillation apparatus apart and not the reflux one. So, uh, when we want to distinguish whether one is an aldehyde or a ketone, what we do is we use this fantastic reagent uh, called Tollens reagent. And um, the Tollens reagent, we need to prepare this freshly in the lab just because it's got a very short shelf life. So what we do is that we mix aqueous sodium uh, hydroxide to aqueous silver nitrate to make the brown precipitate, which is the silver oxide, with also the byproducts. Um, these are the byproducts. We don't really need to include them. They don't really make a difference in it, to be very honest. And then what we do is we would um, use this dilute. Whoa. We'll just use uh, this and dilute it with uh, ammonia to make it dissolve, basically. So as you can see here, we're back in aqueous. So we've re oh that should be solid sorry, so we've reacted the solid brown precipitate with ammonia, um, and aqueous, and that makes all of these bunch of products which you don't really need, plus, oh well this plus, um, the dissolved products, okay, um if you haven't noticed, all I've done here I've just moved I used all of this because remember we haven't taken anything out I just added NH3 to the AGO Ag2O, 2NO3, H2O. And there we have Tollens reagent. Now the good thing about Tollens reagent is that we can use it to, um, we can use its indistinguishable, or this is distinguishable asset of it to tell us whether it's a aldehyde or a ketone. So what happens in this is that the Ag+, plus, the silver ion that is from all of this, luckily for you, you don't actually need to learn this equation, by the way. I just wrote it there just in case you want to know. But the Ag+, plus from it, would react, well, would be reduced, and this would be oxidised to make, hold on, wait for it, the carboxylic acid. Now, we know or if you did F325, you should know that whenever one thing gets oxidized, the other must be reduced. So obviously, technically speaking, we've lost an electron, okay? So the Ag plus has gained that electron. Remember, oxidation is loss of electrons. So we have a lost an electron, and this has been reduced, so reduction is gain of electron. So we have gained an electron to make silver as a solid. Now this silver precipitate, sorry about that, this silver precipitate will be formed as a famous thing called a silver mirror. And that's important because only aldehydes will oxidize to make this carboxylic acid and in effect would reduce this to make silver mirror or the solid precipitate. Okay, remember ketones do not further oxidize so this would not happen if you had a ketone in the middle, let's just change that, this will not oxidize and therefore this would not reduce to make the silver mirror. So from the results, 
Results from A, as expected, there's no reaction. We have um, no, we just, it's just clear. Uh, results from B is that there is no reaction. Okay, so using that information, we know that this is a ketone. And over here, a silver mirror precipitate has formed. So we know it's an aldehyde. Now, if we want to actually find out what ketone, what compound it is, or what aldehyde it is, we follow a series of steps. First of all, we go back to our two 4-DMP derivative compounds, um, the ones with the yellow or orange precipitate, and we filter and we crystallize it, because this is not pure, okay? It's not that pure. It's a bit like water, how water is not pure. So what we do, we filter it, and then we heat it up, and we crystallize it. And then we allow it to dry, and then we heat it and record its melting point. And we just compare it to the database. So let's say, for example, we have uh, we have this table. This table is actually not accurate. I just made these figures up, apart from the first one where I got from the OCR book. And what we do, we just we just record the melting points. Remember, we're looking at the derivative. The 2,4-DMP derivative one, not this. So, looking at the results from it, from B, the melting, I've forgotten about A, we don't care about A anymore, the melting point is 90.7 degrees Celsius. Now, taking into consideration human error with the thermometer, um, we can assume that this ketone is hexantuone. From uh, C, it's 83.9, again with human error of the thermometer reading all of that, we can assume that it is hexanal, just based on these three figures over here. So overall, we know that A is a tertiary alcohol. We can just call it, um, we could call it, I don't know, 2-methyl-2-methyl-pentan-2-ohm. Yep, pentantuone. B is a ketone, hexantuone, and C is an aldehyde, hexanal. And that is it for this investigation.